This is our novitiate chapel, which is named the Chapel of the North American Martyrs. And we're going to be talking inside here as we celebrate our feast of the North American Martyrs. Well, what better group to protect and to look for as inspiration and also as challenge than St. Isaac Jogues and his companions who went to the far reaches and who are willing to sacrifice everything in service. And I think that's the important thing. The identity of what would you, if you were a founder, what would you ask your missionaries to do? And you're willing to leave everything home. North American martyrs left France. The Glenmary missionaries left their homes, their families, in what? In service to people and to what? To bring the fullness of the gospel to the mission regions of the United States. At the time of St. Isaac Jogues, the mission regions were the northern part around the Great Lakes. At the time of Father Bishop, those mission regions were where? In the south, in Appalachia. The North American martyrs are generally thought of as a group, and there were eight French uh, men associated with the Jesuit order, some priests, lay brother, and then uh, lay volunteer. And they ministered in upper New York and lower Canada in the 1630s through about 50. And they were martyred between 1642 and 1649, so 125 years before the American Revolution is when they were active. They, they came to evangelize the native population. And uh, kind of interesting, the Jesuit approach, at least the French Jesuits, uh, they saw that it was very important to understand the religion of the people they were trying to evangelize, and then rather than uproot it, to try to build on it. Uh, there's a hymn associated with uh, this group of Jesuits in which they refer to God as mighty Gitche Manitou, you know, even using the Indian name for, for God as a way of saying, uh, God is already present in your life and we want to help you understand him better. The, the way of adapting like the local culture was to live exactly as a local culture was living. And so they went among the Native Americans, the Iroquois, some of the other tribes and lived among them and with them and really tried not to live as Europeans. Obviously they wouldn't have had the supplies, but to live and to work as they would have as a Native American. What Father Bishop wanted to do when he recognized them as our founders in the sense of we would recognize on October 19th, our Founders Day, think about the fact that um, you're looking for an identity. You have a very young, very energetic, uh, an outward looking mission group that you hope that will grow and that you hope will go to the, to the edges of what is the Catholic Church here in the United States. So if you would look at that from that perspective, think about identity. Who are we and who do we hope to become? And in doing that, who do you pick? You pick some of the only saints at that time within North America who are, by the way, you might, be, you might want to note, were are, uh, canonized in 1930. So it would have been very soon the founding of the Glenmary Home Missioners. During that time, he became very conscious of the need to be uh, re reaching out and how do you communicate the gospel? And then in 1930, the Catholic Church canonized these American Jesuits. So they, and one of the things he did, he developed a chapel trailer and he called it the Chapel of the American Martyrs. Well, you know, kind of wanting to hold up the idea of what it means to be committed to Jesus. Some of the fathers of the church used to say, the, the blood of martyrs is a seed that helps plant the church. And kind of the paradigm of the life of a follower of Jesus is to live like Jesus. 
And Jesus was willing to lay down his life for us. And you know, whether we do that in one act that makes us dead, or whether we live every moment in a way that says, Jesus is the most important thing in my life, is less, uh, is kind of where we want to go with it, it seems like. I guess I hear those martyrs asking each of us, what's the most important thing in your life? And when you honestly name that, are you comfortable with that? What better group to protect and to look for as inspiration and also as challenge than St. Isaac Jogues and his companions who went to the far reaches and who are willing to sacrifice everything in service. And I think that's one of the things that always struck me as I read about the North American martyrs. Um, and as any missioner, one of the things that happens there is this transition, you love the people that you serve. And even with them, a matter of putting their life at risk, for us, it's always maybe not putting your life at risk, but it's the love of the people that you serve. And that's an overpowering. And as I visit our missions today, you see this over and over with our men, that there's this deep, passionate commitment and love of those that we serve. And what better way to celebrate the Feast of the North American Martyrs, the Feast of our Founders Day, than to celebrate the people that we know and we love and we're excited to serve. So we have something called the Glen Mary Mission Prayer. And um, it summarizes the North American martyrs, but also kind of the spirituality of who we are and what we're called to be. And so I'd like just as we end this to pray this. Now many of you have not heard this, but perhaps as you, I will go slow and you can listen to the words and the poignant way in which we as missionaries commit ourselves. And so we pray. O loving Father, may your spirit guide our missionary service. Like Jesus, may we proclaim the reign of God is at hand. Like Peter, may we fall on our knees at the sight of your great catch. Like Paul, may we strive to share the gospel with all people. Like Isaac Jogues and companions, may we willingly sacrifice our lives in service to the people of rural America. O oh, creator of all, give us the courage to leave the 99 and go after the lost one. Grant us the joy to rejoice over the found one. Compel us to care for the victims that we find along the road. Move us to embrace the prodigals returning home. We ask this through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.